Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning. We have a packed adventure for you today for tuning in with us live right here from Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. Good morning to everybody. My name is Milo, and today is Earth Day. We've been celebrating Earth Week all week so far, but today is the big day. In fact, it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So if you think back to all the way back to 1970, we are now celebrating in 2020 right here at Riverbanks. And today when I say we have a packed adventure, we are going to head all around the zoo. In fact, we're gonna start over in our Siamang Island. We're gonna take requests from you and head where you wanna go because during our temporary closure, we are all about bringing the zoo to all of you. Good morning, Alexis and William. Thanks for tuning in. Ella, nice to hear from you again. Jackson, good morning. Thanks for joining us on Earth Day. There are so many ways that you can celebrate, but I'm glad you're celebrating Earth Day with us here today. Now, there's something I wanna tease out to you really quick. In fact, I got a new look today. I'm wearing a brand new Riverbanks t-shirt. I know it's gonna be backwards in your view, but it says Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. South Carolina strong with some of our favorite animal residents. I wanted to give you a quick teaser of that because we got a bit more that we're going to talk about. But like I said, I wanted to start with some of our animal friends. In fact, one of our people friends too. We're going to be joined by Alexa, one of our mammal keepers who takes care of our Siamang apes. Now we have two Siamangs here and she's going to introduce us to both of them. But what better way to start an Earth Day Z learning adventure than with a great snack with some of our favorite friends. So we're gonna make our way over here to Siamang Island, start sending in those questions. In fact, start commenting where you wanna head to Riverbanks today. And we're gonna do a, a virtual zoo adventure today. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera though. We're kind of facing the sun here, but say good morning to Alexa. Good morning. Nice to see you this morning, Alexa. Now, Alexa, you brought some great treats. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about what we're snacking on, and then we'll introduce <laughs> the Siamangs. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be throwing our Siamangs some bananas, and then right now all of these amazing bamboo shoots are popping up all over the zoo, and they're very, very fun treats for the um, animals all throughout the zoo, so we're going to be throwing them some of these Wow. As well. How resourceful. Okay, so when we say zoo and garden, and we really do use both of those resources. So bamboo shoots and bananas this morning. But Alexa, I'm looking at the island. I don't see any Siamangs. <laughs> they are very well camouflaged right now. If you look up at this top tier here, I'm hoping that when I throw the bananas, you guys oh. will be able to see them. <laughs> okay, I but can kind of see them. absolutely loving the sun right now, and they're really enjoying laying in this, this part of the island in this cool grass. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and toss them some bananas absolutely. and see if they pop up for you guys. Well, we love to see that they're nice and comfortable here. Like I said, we have our two Siamangs. Alexa's gonna go ahead and toss up some of those bananas here. Let's get a quick shot of her tossing them over. We'll see what kind of aim she has to get them to both of those Siamangs. So that's Katam. You can sort of see her back right there. there okay, goes. so we got some movement over here. You might be able to see some kind of shadowy outline. Somebody just reached up for that tire. Alexa mentioned that was Hitam. Hitam. And we're looking for Max now too. Like I He's said, we got two there. characters. <laughs> But you know, this is a great example of, we are always here on animal time. <laughs> Whatever the animals want to do, they get to kind of call the shots and we take their lead. We're not going to force them to do anything. If they don't want to make a big grand appearance for Z learning, we're totally fine with that. Not everyone needs to be a camera hog. But the reason why we came over here to Siamang Island, Siamangs actually have a great conservation message first and foremost, but we also want to introduce this pair. Now, those of you who follow Riverbanks for quite a while, you're very familiar with Max and all of his famous calls, but Hatam is actually one of our newer animal residents here to our Riverbanks family. Now, Hatam, she's the one over further up on the ledge, so that kind of shadowy outline that you see. And Hitam is a female that arrived to us to be a companion with Max. Now, Alexa, tell us a little bit more about how these two have hit it off. Are they getting along pretty well since they've been introduced? They are getting along fantastically. Um, it's oh, that kind is so of good amazing how great they're getting along. Um, she was a very good match for him, so we really are so grateful to our species survival plan coordinators who picked her out for him. 
Um, she adores him and she can be seen just following him around the habitat <laughs> a lot. If he goes over the vine to the other island, she is very close She's behind. She's right behind him. I love um, that. So they are getting along really well. They're epic cuddlers with one another. So they're not <laughs> observing social distancing right now, but they're doing a great <laughs> job together. Um, and we're so happy that they're just doing so well. Well, how neat to hear that they just bonded, kicked it off right away when she arrived. What a neat story. Now, what's really interesting too about this pair is a lot of times you hear us talking about breeding pairs or approved breeding recommendations. Alexa just mentioned the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. Now, what's interesting about that Species Survival Plan is not only do they do breeding recommendations, but they also do just true social matches as well. And this is a great example of that. So Max and Hitam are actually a a kind of a social grouping there, just a pair bond. We don't have any breeding recommendations, so don't look out for any little baby Siamings. Instead, we're just very happy to hear that these two have gotten along so well, and they are munching on their bananas, even if you can't see them, they are thoroughly enjoying them. We might be able to see their silhouettes. I don't think we're gonna hear them call this morning though. No, they typically tend to call first thing in the morning. Um, that's typical of these guys and Siamangs in the wild as well. So usually from 9 to 10, that's when you can really hear these guys doing their call together. And their call is such a wonderful thing, um, especially for these two who are still very new to one another. They have started their, um, their calling together, which has been fantastic for us to hear. Um, but usually it's a territorial thing. But because Siamangs are bonded, mated pairs, they also have a song that's their courtship song. So oh, these two have been that. practicing that together and been uh, fine tuning it a little bit over the last few weeks. And um, it's really phenomenal to hear. It, and it is easily my all time favorite animal noise. It is so cool to hear those whooping calls. They use those big throat pouches to really elevate that noise. In fact, those of you who live around riverbanks, you've probably heard it from your own houses. In fact, that call can carry upwards of two miles away. So they really do belt it out right here <laughs> at riverbanks. But right now they are enjoying the sunshine and their bananas <laughs> instead. Nice. Now we did get a couple of questions in. How old are the pair? I know that Hatam just celebrated her 16th birthday. Yeah, and Max is going to be 19 in June. Gotcha. So 19 and 16. So these are both full grown adults, but we would consider them to be kind of median life. They're not necessarily elderly individuals or older, um, but they also aren't spring chickens either. Um, so they are a mature pair. And it looks like they've kind of wrapped up their banana snack this morning. We can are you brave enough to throw it? Let's do it. <laughs> Max? Oh. oh, perfect. Stayed on the island. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, hopefully they enjoy that great snack. Go get it. Oh, they went right for it, of course. They love those bamboo shoots. They love it. Um, one of the fun things that we like to do with them as well is we'll freeze them because they have quite a bit of water content. So on those really, really hot days, we'll throw them out to the Siamangs or to our baboons or any of our other primates who really enjoy them. Oh, there comes Max. Hopefully you can see him. It's a little shadowy. Let's see if we can kind of focus in a little bit more. But he came right down to that bamboo shoot that came over here. Megan was just wondering what color are they? It might be a little hard to see. They are completely black in color. There he goes. He's grabbing it. <laughs> and they have such a unique form of locomotion from getting around. They brachiate using those big long arms. I know that's a really big word, but it is a, another word for swinging for them to swing from place to place. But Hitam has a really unique way of getting around too. Alexa, tell us a little bit more about her kind of preferred style. <laughs> um, so we recently put up this great big vine um, between the islands so that you can probably see it a little bit over there. And um, that just allows them to go from one island to the other and yep. sort of exercise their choice on where they want to be. So Max will brachiate, like Milo said, just hands going across. She will actually stand on top of the vine and bipedally, so on her two bottom feet, walk across and do a balancing like tight wire walk, which oh is gosh. really hysterical <laughs> to see. Um, she is starting to be a little bit braver and doing the brachiating across with Max. I think she's found that it's a little faster to catch up with him. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really a treat um, when we first had her out on the island watching her do that. We got a good kick out of it. <laughs> What a great form of balance and great adaptation. They really are built for life up in the trees. In fact, Austin, I did just catch your, catch your question of do they like to go swimming? Well, <laughs> we don't actually have them go swimming and that's a natural behavior for Siamangs. They don't like to dip into water. In fact, that's why this habitat was designed the way it is to be in an island format to connect these two spaces for them. 
they hang out on the island. The water really isn't that deep. Alexa, would you say it's just a couple feet deep? It's about three feet deep, if sure. if that. Yep. Um, yeah, they're not natural born swimmers. They they don't go into the water. So this is a really lovely natural barrier for them. So they stay on their islands. They don't really go in the water, but it just looks really, really nice and natural for them. Plus eventually when we do reopen, you all know that you get a great view of our Simings from the island. It's unobstructed. <laughs> Max is checking everything out all around us. Hopefully you can get a good view of that <laughs> great face. Alexa, I'm so glad that you brought them snacks this morning. In fact, we might actually have to swing back over here. We have kind of a, a whole big Earth Day adventure today. So we might have to swing back over and say hi. But in the meantime, we're gonna let them finish up eating their bamboo shoots. I wanna give a big thank you to Alexa. Thank you guys for joining us this morning. That was perfect. All right, everybody, we're gonna continue on the rest of our Riverbanks adventure. We were getting tons of different comments in. I love all these questions about our Siamangs. Thanks again, Alexa, we'll see you soon. You're welcome, have a good day. All right, so we're gonna keep getting a view of those Siamangs as we walk by, but we're gonna start to head around the rest of the zoo. It's Earth Day, of course, so we want to give you kind of that full view all throughout the zoo. Because you know what, Austin, I just saw your comment come in. You want to see the lions and the tigers. I think we need to start heading on a walk then. In fact, let me go ahead and turn around this camera. We're going to start heading on our own Riverbanks adventure. But now that I kind of have the place to myself, we social distance away from Alexa. She's going to go back to her other routine. I'm going to go pull my mask down again. And now what we're going to do, since we kind of have the place to ourselves, it's all 400 plus of you and me and some other essential staff members, of course, doing their daily routines, we're going to make our way around Riverbanks today. Now, I saw a bunch of different comments come in yesterday when I asked, well, how do you want to celebrate Earth Day? What animals do you want to see? Because Z-Learning is about all of you and we're here to give you a zoo-wide tour. So let me go ahead and check my list because I wanted to write them down. I didn't want to miss anybody's names. We had a comment from Lara and Ariel who wanted lions, tigers, and bears. I think we can go ahead and serve that out. We're gonna head over to tigers right now, in fact. Um, Alejandro commented with tigers and lions as a request too. And Austin and Savannah specifically wanted big cats. It was unanimous. Everyone wanted to hear from the cats. How are the lions doing? How are the tigers doing? So we're walking in front of our koala knockabout right now, and we're gonna make our way over to that tiger habitat. Now, it is kind of mid-morning, which typically means that our keepers are starting to service those different areas. They're starting to clean, shift the animals. So cross your fingers with me. We'll see if Earth Day is on our side and if those animals are out on habitat. If they're not, no worries, we'll make our way back over so that way y'all can see our big cats this morning. But let me go ahead, we made it over here to the front of our tiger habitat. Let me turn around this camera because I might have some bad news for all of you. I hear all the cheering, but right now I don't see a single tiger or a keeper, which means we're gonna go ahead and keep exploring. Typically, you'd be able to see our tigers pretty well. Sometimes they like to kind of nap and rest in kind of a little cavern area back where it's really shady, back behind that bamboo. You can see that orange cone though. We have some extra fun enrichment out for our animals. But I'm gonna guess nobody's home right now, which means that they're starting to do that cleaning routine, which is a part of our essential staff. Even though we might be temporarily closed, we still want to provide, of course, that top-notch animal care. So let's check on the neighbors and see what they're up to. Now, if I heard those radio calls correct, we might be perfect timing or we might be a little early. Let's go ahead and check it out. I see a couple of lions over here. We're checking on the neighbors right now. You can see two of our lions. But those of you who are familiar with Riverbanks, you know we have many more than just two. This is Lindalani and Zuri, the female who's looking at us right now kind of in the middle of the habitat. You can get a great view of her. And then Zuri is a little bit harder to see kind of back in that shadow, but Zuri is our adult male lion of our pride. So we have eight different individuals for our lion pride. And I think, if I had to guess, the keepers are trying to shift those individuals back right now. And what that means is our lions actually do know their names. A lot of our animals do. And since they have such a great working relationship with our keepers and they're positively reinforced, we're able to shift them back safely, secure them, lock them inside into those bedroom areas. The keepers can come out clean, pick up any enrichment, make sure the habitat's safe. I can hear the keepers yelling. You might be able to hear them. They're calling them right now. Sometimes it's, you know, the lions have selective hearing, let's say. 
So sometimes you gotta kind of bellow out those names. But right now is a great example of kind of that working relationships. So that way our keepers can safely take care of our animals because they never want to share space with a dangerous animal like this. And we want our lions to be lions. But it looks like Linda, Lonnie, and Zuri have their own kind of plan for today. Let's go ahead and see if we can kind of change angles and get a different view today. We'll try not to distract them too much because the keepers definitely want to get in there and provide them that new enrichment, send out their diet for the day, of course. But y'all are getting a great view of both, a great example of a male lion and a female lion. Now, Zuri is right around 16, 17 years old and Linda Lani is just five years old. So there's a little bit of an age difference. But Linda Lani is actually one of our lionesses that gave birth to those cubs, gosh, almost two years ago now. It'll be two years this October. All right, everybody. So those of you who wanted to see lions, we provided it, we checked it off the list. But like I said, I think we might be distracting her from hearing those keepers calls. So let's go ahead and head on over. We're gonna let them kind of continue on their own. Since I'm still over here by myself, kind of walking around the grounds, so I'm gonna go get, keep my mask down for right now. Alexis and William, I cannot agree with you more. Our keepers here at Riverbanks are absolutely amazing. They really have been doing a fantastic job as essential staff members, providing top-notch quality care, even during these uncertain times. It has been amazing to see our Riverbanks family really, really come together and work together in order to keep this beautiful place running. But I do want to go ahead and pause right here. We'll check out our baboons in a second. But you remember that t-shirt that I mentioned? My new t-shirt that I'm wearing today, the Riverbanks Zoo and Garden South Carolina Strong Shirt. The reason why I wore it today is it's actually brand new. We are now, to, as of today, this morning, we launched an online gift shop for the first time. And what that means is all of you can actually head online, shop for some Riverbanks unique items, and have them shipped to your home, of course, while we socially distance. In fact, this shirt right here is $19.99 plus shipping and handling, but you can order those in support of Riverbanks so that way, even during our temporary closure, you can tell us how much you love and support us. We've been loving all the support with Z Learning, but I wanted to give a shout out to this very cool shirt that was custom made for us right here at Riverbanks. And maybe you can wear with a little bit of support yourself. Let me turn around this camera though. Oh, somebody is doing a little bit of yoga this morning. We have one of our adult male baboons. These are our Himadreas baboons. We have two males and a handful of females actually. I can see a couple of the ladies hanging out. But these are always kind of a, a guest favorite here at the zoo. Folks love to see all those different expressions that primates make. Of course, we can hopefully try to get them a little bit better of a view from over here all the way over to the moat. I do apologize though, those of you who are asking if we can zoom in, I unfortunately cannot zoom in until now. Let's go ahead and take a little closer look. There you go, you can get a much better view of our baboons. Wow, I must have been doing the zoom in wrong. We're all learning together, all 400 of you and me. What a much better view that y'all have now of our baboons. Now, Himadreus baboons are really well known for that big poofy appearance. In fact, let me see if I can zoom in. Let me go ahead and move over here a little bit. Don't wanna get y'all car sick. But here's one of our females over here. And you can see just how different the male and female look. Now this Earth Day, you guys are gonna be packed with lots of different facts all about our animals. And one of them is that Himadreus baboons are what is known as sexually dimorphic. It means that males and females look very differently. In fact, their next door neighbors, the lions are another great example of that. Males obviously have those big, huge manes and for Himadreus baboons, they kind of have those big manes too. But of course you can't miss that bright red rump, which baboons are so well known for. Now, of course that big right bump is most iconically used for kind of attracting mates, kind of it's all about displaying. Males will also have really red colored faces as well. Glad we were able to get a great view over here of our baboons. All right, everybody, let's continue to go. I'm seeing lots of comments coming in. Ooh, Amanda, I see that you wanna head over to penguins today. I'm gonna have you pause that idea. Everyone who's been commenting penguins, I love it so much, but you know what? I have a secret for all of you. Next week, we're going to have a whole feature just on our penguins again. I know we did it not too terribly long ago, 
But you know what, Z Learning, y'all wanna hear about those penguins, so I think we should head behind the scenes next week with our penguins, so stay tuned for that. I love that idea. Right now we're driving by our, <laughs> our grizzly bear ridge. Let's go ahead and kind of see what our grizzly bear brothers might be up to this morning if they're out invisible. Oh, here, let me go ahead and turn around the camera. I got up right here in our cave area. All right, they might've been shift backed as well with the rest of our animals on this row, along with the big cats, our tigers and our lions. So, that means we're gonna keep on heading because I had another request that I saw yesterday that came through from an individual named Savannah. Savannah was hoping to head to Sea Lion Landing specifically, and I loved that idea. So let's head on over to Sea Lion Landing because it's the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. So the more animals that we can see, the more we can connect with nature, the better. But you might also notice in our caption this morning, it's a big long caption, and pretty much what our call to action today for your Z learning activity is to do something impactful for the Earth today. I want you to get creative. While you're at home, while you're social distancing, how can you support the Earth in a positive way? What's some way that you can make a difference? Maybe it's conserving water. Maybe it's upcycling something that you were planning on getting rid of. Or maybe it's sharing a message on your own social media about how others can make a difference and kind of using your voice and interacting with more people. I want y'all to get creative, but if you do something that's really impactful and you're really proud of yourself, we want to go ahead and give you a round of applause. And I want you to take a picture of whatever you did. Maybe you planted a plant. Maybe it was a pollinator species that's great for native wildlife. I want you to comment back at this video, take a picture of yourself or type in what you did. Let us know, how are you celebrating Earth Day? It's the 50th anniversary, it's a big day. We're gonna make our way up here to Sea Lion Landing, but we wanna hear from all of you. So let us know. And we wanna give you a big congratulations because we are all a force for nature and we wanna hear what all of you are doing. So Savannah, since you requested Sea Lion Landing, we came on over here to check out our sea lions and seals. Let's turn around this camera. What a beautiful day. Wow, that looks very inviting to take a dip in this morning. I can see a couple of our individuals here this morning. I can see Annette, if you look way over there, closer to the door. Let's go ahead and zoom in over on where Annette is. Annette is our female California sea lion, and she knows about what time it is. It's almost time for that feeding and training demonstration. It'll get started here not too long, which means that Annette's nice and hungry. I'm looking around the rest of the habitat. It looks like some of our other individuals were shifted back as well. 10 o'clock is a great time for our animal care professionals to feed, clean, care, all those sort of regular routine things. But Annette definitely knows what door they come out of and where they're going to be hanging out from. Gunner and Chase, I just saw your comment come in about the aquarium. I have great news for you. If you're missing the aquarium, join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We're actually going to head inside of our aquarium for a very behind the scenes look because since it is still Earth Week, we want to go ahead and share it with our one of our most important stories of how we actually are helping to rescue native corals to the Florida Reef Track. So tune in tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. like normal for Z Learning, and we're actually going to learn together more about some of our rescue coral species. Now, of course, since we're over here at Sea Lion Landing, one of our biggest messages over here in this area is reducing our use of plastic. The less plastic that we use, especially the single-use plastic, the less ends up in our waterways, whether they're locally here right in South Carolina or our coastlines, and unfortunately the habitats that California sea lions and harbor seals share as well. Hopefully y'all are getting a great view of Annette. Those of you who are just tuning in, we're here at Sea Lion Landing, getting a view of Annette who is eagerly awaiting her breakfast this morning, or I should say maybe impatiently waiting. Here's one of our harbor seals who just came up. This looks like Triton. Those of you who joined at Z Learning before would recognize these characters. Great questions, everybody. Keep all those comments coming in. I'm trying to scroll through them all while you're enjoying Annette this morning. 
April just commented in, how do the animals fare when we have kind of severe weather that rolls through our area? What do you do with the animals? Kind of what does their routine look like? Well, you might notice a pattern as we kind of make our way around the zoo. All of our animals have different secure backup areas, those kind of bedroom areas, which means that they have a nice secure area to go during inclement weather. Look at this timing though. Good morning, y'all. Nice to see ya. <laughs> so we have our mammal keepers that just headed out on habitat this morning. And it looks like we have three of our individuals out here for our morning feeding. Glad you could all join with us. What great timing here for Earth Day. So we have Gambit, Triton, both of our harbor seals, and then Annette over here with Jeff, one of our mammal keepers. They had wonderful timing here this morning. Now, I know that you've joined us here on deck before for an up-close view. This is another great example of even during our temporary closure, we are trying to keep their routines, our animal routines, as normal as possible, which includes a morning feeding and training demonstration. It's practicing all these different behaviors, making sure that they're rehearsed, practiced, because these husbandry behaviors, like checking out her whole entire body, are extra important. Right now we're getting a great look at Annette and Jeff, one of our mammal keepers, and he's interacting with Annette through that training session. So you might hear that clicking noise. That's the bridge to let them know that they did the behavior correctly and a reward is coming. But don't worry, if they didn't do the behavior correctly or if they're a little slower or maybe a little confused, it's not that they don't get a reinforcer or punished, it's truly that it's just ignored, redirected, and re-asked. And that's hanging out in our water here. Let's go ahead and zoom back a little bit. Get a little better of view of Annette as she hangs out over with Jeff. Now here's another quick teaser too. Mariana's over here with Gambit, another one of our mammal keepers. Now you might recognize that from one of our past features. Gambit was just getting his teeth brushed real quick, which is a great behavior. Another great example of those husbandry behaviors. Y'all, we could not have had better timing here on Earth Day. What a way to celebrate. I'm glad we could come over here, catch our training session right in time. And we really have the place to ourselves. It's just me and all of you who are tuning in live here for Z Learning this morning. Keep those comments coming. Let's go ahead and kind of scroll through some more of those as we check out this training session this morning. Here comes back out with Triton and Mariah, another one of our keepers. Now you notice all of our keepers have on their protective masks, that PPE, that personal protective equipment. Also, they have those gloves on too while they're handling animal food. Oh, here, let's go ahead and get a closer look. Here comes Gambit, grabbed a quick fish <laughs> and head him back on over. Now they wear that PPE not only when they're interacting with each other, while they're try socially distancing between the staff members, but also when they're working with certain animal species here at the zoo, because of course their health and well-being is our top priority. Y'all are getting a great view right here at Sea Lion Landing. Now, our harbor seals and our California sea lions are great ambassadors for the message of reducing our use of single-use plastics. Now, I know everybody is hanging around home and socially distancing, but even during that time, I want you to think of how you can make a difference on Earth Day. And more creatively, I want you to think of how you can make every day Earth Day. Think of things that you can reduce your use of or maybe even skip altogether. A great example of that are single-use plastic straws. Can you reduce your use or better yet even say no thank you, skip the straw or bring a reusable straw? Because like I said before, unfortunately all too often plastics end up in our world's ocean and affects the habitats of animals like our harbor seals and our California sea lions.
Daniel, I just saw, caught your comment about do the masks confuse the animals? Well, our animals are actually pretty used to seeing masks, whether it's when the veterinary staff come into the area, when there's certain procedures going on. So we do what's called habituate our animals and get them used to and comfortable with all those new things, whether they're wearing gloves or masks in the area. So thankfully our animals were nice and comfortable and it wasn't too much of a transition for them. If anything, it was more of a transition for our keeper staff as it probably has been a transition for all of you at home too. But don't worry, our animals are very adaptable and didn't throw them off. August, I just saw your question, age six, that you wanna be a zookeeper when you grow up. I know that feeling, absolutely. What I recommend to you is keep learning lots about animals. The more you know about animals in the natural world and make a difference here, especially on Earth Day and Earth Week, you can have an amazing job like some of our animal care staff right here at Riverbanks and get to work with some of these amazing animals. Shannon, I just saw your comment too. How long does it take to train them? It kind of depends on each individual animal. They all have their own personalities, their own quirks, you could say. And of course, we take it all at their own individual speed. So some animals are quick to learn and others might be a little bit more hesitant or a little bit more cautious. Let's go ahead and zoom back. It looks like our keepers just wrapped up this morning's demo for these three individuals. Thanks so much, guys. So they're wrapping up right here at Sea Lion Landing. They're gonna head back and feed the rest of those individuals behind the scenes, just like we talked about before on Z Learning. But what a nice relaxing break over here at Sea Lion Landing this morning. Let's go ahead and say see you later to the Sea Lion. Savannah, I'm glad that you asked to visit over here at Sea Lion Landing, but let's go ahead and keep on heading around the zoo. We're gonna head back over to lion and tiger and see what might be heading on over in that area since we still have 400 of you joining us this morning but i do want to mention quick as we're kind of making our way through riverbanks this morning for this kind of build your own adventure of sorts i do want to mention once again that today we officially launched our online store which means that you can actually help support Riverbanks right from home. There's lots of creative ways that you can still support Riverbanks, whether it's through renewing your membership or buying a brand new membership just to support our society and us here at Riverbanks. But also you can make a donation by heading to riverbanks.org and clicking on our donate button. We, of course, would very much appreciate the support, especially during these hard times, during our temporary closure but all of your support through Z Learning and your great questions have really meant the world to us and the rest of our team and family here at Riverbanks. But another way that you can do that starting today is actually check out our Riverbanks gift shop online and maybe get yourself a shirt just like this. Like I said earlier, these are $19.99 and they are made for us right here at Riverbanks for South Carolina Strong. I apologize for the backwards view again, but if you actually check out in our comments, we have a link that's actually set up so that way you can actually click on it right here from our live video, head over to that online store and check out some of those new items that we have in here for Riverbanks. Stacy, I am so glad that you are enjoying all of these different features. It has been such an honor for me to bring the zoo to all of you live on weekdays. I'm so glad that y'all are still tuning in. You're asking great questions. It is so neat for us still to make those connections, inspire actions, and we're still impacting conservation. We are living our mission each and every day, even during our temporary closure. So thank you all so much. We are making our way back over to Lion and Tiger. I have a feeling our keeper still might be hanging out on those habitats, so we might not see the cats today specifically on Earth Day, but that doesn't mean that we can't see them on another Z Learning adventure. In fact, we are always hearing your comments, listening to those requests, and brewing up a little bit of a plan. Let's take a peek over here at Lion Exhibit. It actually looks like we have some of our keepers out on Habitat right now. In fact, that's Andrea. She's actually our coordinator of operant conditioning and animal training. She's actually hanging out. She's checking out that entire Habitat. Morning, Andrea. Nice to see you. So no lions right now. I'm glad that we saw Zuri and Linda Lani here a second ago. But Andrea is making sure that the Habitat's safe, clean, 
enriched for the day. And we have some of our other staff coming out too. Mallory's heading out here. So of course we're gonna let them continue to do their essential work. And it sounds like we're gonna have to say hi to the lions another time. So everybody who joined us for Z learning here this morning, I wanna say a happy, happy Earth Day to you once again. Thank you for joining us. It's a 50th anniversary for Earth Day. But you know what? I have one last treat I want to send y'all off with because we have, ooh, I believe it's our male tiger. Let me get a better look. Let me turn around this camera so you all can see. Ooh, it's actually Koshka. It's our female tiger. Let's turn around this camera. All the lorikeets are going to be chirping around in the background. But you can see Koshka, our female Amur tiger, heading around the habitat. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in when she gets in view again. Because like I said, we've been hearing all those requests. Y'all want to hear more about our big cats. So of course we want to safely be able to feature them on Z Learning. And from public viewing, I think that's a pretty safe view, of course. <laughs> Let's go ahead and zoom in on Koshka. She makes her way around the habitat. Let's see if she actually heads through where we might be able to see her this morning. Now, Koshka is actually a 15-year-old individual, so she is a mature tiger. Some people might call them Siberian tigers, but a more accurate name for them would be Amur. It'd be A-M-U-R if you're looking for the spelling of that. But these tigers are actually native to kind of the far eastern parts of Russia. So you kind of notice that she has a very big build to her. She's very bulky, kind of has that lighter color of coat. So she'd be related to other species of tiger subspecies, like Bengal tigers, for example, or Malayan tigers. Um, but she has a much bigger build to her, more adapted for that chilly weather of the Siberian area. But let's go ahead and pan back a little bit as she makes her way around the habitat. If you look at this section right here, on a sunny day like today, she might actually hang out here in that center spot. You can't really get a great view of it from here, but that's actually her pool that she can cool off in. I am so glad that Ms. Koshka was heading around the habitat this morning to give you all a great view of one of our tigers. Once again, before I say see you later, until next time, I want to give a big thank you to everybody who joined us for Z Learning on Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everybody. Remember, make an impact in your own individual ways. What can you do to help the Earth today? And comment back and let us know how you're being a hero or a force for nature. We want to hear about how creative you are, and we want to hear about how you're making a difference. Don't forget to join us tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. We're heading to our aquarium for a peek inside of our rescue corals. Thank you so much, everybody, and have a happy, happy Earth Day.